Lines and Curves in Space, Part 2. When we describe a line in two-dimensional space, we often start at a reference point, such as the y-intercept, and then travel according to the given slope. To describe a line in space, we use a similar strategy. We start with a reference point and climb or fall according to a vector. The equation of the line traveling through P0 in the direction of V is given by the vector valued function x0, y0, z0, that vector, plus V times a parameter t. The starting point, P0, is given by R0. It is the position of the object at time t equals 0. So R of 0 would give us R0. The movement of the object is given by the vector V. At t equals 3, the position p of the object is given by the vector r0 plus 3v. An equation of the line in space can be written as a vector or as parametric equations. Let L be the line passing through P0 and P1. Find an equation of the line. Here is our strategy. We will find our starting position. We will find the vector describing movement. And then we will put the two together to get the parameterization of the, cur of the uh, line. For our starting position, we can just use P0. So if, uh, if we choose P0 to be our starting position, R0 would be the vector negative 3, 5, 8. A good choice of V would be the displacement vector from P0 to P1. It's probably the easiest, easiest uh, V to choose. In that case, v is equal to 7, negative 3, negative 9, the displacement from P0 to P1. The last step, putting all this together, is the easiest. r is equal to r0 plus v times the parameter t. Note, we could have chosen P1 as our starting point. In that case, V would go in the uh, opposite direction than the one we've chosen, giving the curve a different orientation. The orientation we chose was from P0 to P1. Find the equation of the line segment between P0 and P1. This time we want to do a line segment. First, let's just find the equation of the line that goes between both points. For R0, I just choose P0. And for V, again, I just cho choose the displacement from P0 to P1. Putting uh, these two things together, the parameterization of the line is equal to R0 plus V times the parameter T. So we have the equation of the line going through P0 and P1. Recall that we wanted the line segment between P0 and P1. Because we want a line segment, 
we need to put a restriction on t. Given our choice of r0 and v, the appropriate restriction is that t will go between 0 and 1. At t equals 0, I would be at position p0. And then a uh, uh, unit of time of 1 would put me at position p1. And so um, with this choice of r0 and v, t is restricted between 0 and 1. The limit of a vector-valued function is defined much as it is for scalar-valued functions. And there is a straightforward method for computing limits of the vector-valued function. If the limits of its components exist, then the limit of the vector is the vector of the limits of its components. Let's find the limit of this vector-valued function. The start of the curve is given by the position 1, 0, 1. The projection of the curve onto the xy plane, notice that that's the unit circle, moving in a counterclockwise direction. Now, in trying to determine the limit, I notice that the x and y components do not converge. Instead, the um, vector-valued function keeps generating the unit circle. However, the z component does converge. It converges to 0. And here's a nice picture showing us um, what's going on. I start off at the, at the top of the cylinder, I start off at the position 1, 0, 1. As time increases, I go in a uh, circle. If I look down onto the xy plane, I go in a circle of uh, radius 1 in a counterclockwise direction. But my altitude keeps getting um, smaller and smaller. Um, and approaches zero. Take care and I'll see you in the next section.